Welcome back. I am Amy Lee, certified professional pet groomer since 2003. But to you, I am your go-to groomer on the web. Today, we are talking about double-coated breeds. I'm going to show you how to keep that undercoat in check. Make it behave. Make it work for you. But most importantly, let it do its job for your pet. In today's episode, you get to meet this beautiful girl. She's a Bernice Mountain Dog. And you're also going to get to meet this gorgeous golden retriever named Augie. What's a double coat? A double coat has a dense undercoat of short woolly hair followed by a top coat that is over the undercoat. The top coat has longer guard hairs and they protect the undercoat. Those guard hairs are more wiry, longer, so that's a double coat. Now that dense undercoat protects your pet from both hot and cold temperatures. Now that we understand the purpose of the undercoat, let's talk about the top coat. The top coat, here's the undercoat, top coat protects the undercoat. It repels moisture, dirt, and keeps things from compressing down into that undercoat because remember that undercoat is protecting their skin. Guard hairs, the top coat, protect our undercoat. Undercoat is very important. Now a lot of you may be thinking, I don't like that undercoat. You may be mad at that undercoat because that undercoat is all over your bed, all over your clothes, and your mouth at times. It's everywhere. I get it. That undercoat is thick and it does shed and it is a nuisance for you. That's why I created this video for you today. Before we start with that, I'm going to show you really up close and personal what is inside of their coat right now before they need groomed. What collects inside that undercoat? The problems that can occur because of it. It's not your fault. It's not your dog's fault. It's a very hard to manage coat. It's high maintenance, but it's worth it. So let's take a look. So we're going to take a close look here at Basil's coat before we get her in the tub because I want to show you what you guys are probably seeing on your pets when they're in need of bathing and brushing. Now we're looking at the undercoat here guys. You can see the difference between the undercoat and the top coat and we also see a lot of dander. What looks like dust and build up there in her coat. This is normal. That undercoat's thick. It's a magnet for all these things guys. It's just the way it is. We have to clean it. If we don't, problems can happen. Your dog's undercoat is a built-in filtration system. Let's look at it this way. You change the filter in your car when you change the oil. You change the filter for your heating and cooling system in your house because the job of the filter is to collect dirt and debris and allergens and keep it from going into the atmosphere that it is filtering. And that is exactly what your pet's undercoat does for your pet it filters things from getting into the skin which gets into their system so that makes pretty good sense right guys we do not want to damage their undercoat which is their filtration system we want to maintain it we want to clean it like changing a filter on a car or in our heating system we will clean that filter which is their undercoat hey that's some pretty good stuff there isn't it i'm gonna have to patent that now let's take a look at Augie's coat here. It's been a while since he's been groomed here professionally. This is nothing that we can't take care of. I know it looks a little scary, doesn't it? There's a lot of dander in there, a lot of buildup, and a lot of undercoat that needs to come out. What is dander? Dander is like dandruff for us. It is a buildup of skin that has flaked off, collects in the coat against the skin there. That's what you see, that's dander, pet dander. A lot of people have issues with it, you know, because it's it's kind of like uh, it can get in your house and become airborne, irritate you. To put things in perspective for you guys, picture it like this. When we're in the shower or taking a bath, we use the loofahs and we exfoliate our skin. If we didn't, what would happen? Well, we would have what you're saying and Basil and Augie today. We would have a buildup of skin that has flaked off. We remove it every day when we're washing our skin. Their skin is like that. It rejuvenates itself so it has to slough off the old skin. That becomes dander. If you just allow that to collect for months and months in your dog's coat, especially if it's an undercoat, you're going to have a lot of mess in there and it's eventually going to cause irritation for your dog. So it's just important to remove it. Before I brush out Basil and Augie, I am going to spray a little bit of this Quicker Slicker. It's made by Nature Specialty. It's a great product. It helps to brush out your dog easily. It's very safe. It's very gentle. Um, but it makes brushing and removing undercoat a breeze. This is a product that I've used for years and I 
I've tried other things, but I will always come back to it. Let's begin by spraying a light mist of Quicker Slicker into Basil's coat, and then we're going to thoroughly line brush her. This product is also very helpful to use during your weekly brush outs with your dog. This will help keep the undercoat in check. It definitely helps to pull out what is willing to come on out of that coat, leaving your dog's coat in, in good shape between brushing. It, it helps to repel dirt too. Big plus. I want to show you this quicker slicker. It's made by Nature Specialty. Um, this is a great product. You guys might want to consider picking it up. Don't forget, all these products that are made for groomers are made for you too. You can buy the same products that I can, and these are the best products. So remember guys, we need to thoroughly line brush our dogs before we wash them, especially a double coat. You want to remove as much undercoat that is willing to come out. You only want to take out what wants to come out with a brush or a comb. You will not need other tools other than a force dryer. So we're prepping both Augie and Basil for their bath. I know that undercoat can be a pain, guys, but I'm going to tell you this. Don't forget this. Don't ever clip your double-coated breed. Don't ever shave it. Don't ever cut into that coat or have any professional do that. You're going to ruin their coat. It may never grow back the same. It most likely will not ever grow back the same and they will end up with an abundance of undercoat. Hear me when I say this, guys. Don't ever clip your double-coated breed. Trust me. You'll thank me for it. These are the products that we're going to use on Basil and Augie today in the tub. The degreaser shampoo is great to use around their ears or maybe... You know, any, if the top of their coat is real oily, if they've got an, a buildup of abundance of dander and stuff, that's great for releasing that. So it's a great product made by Davis. We're using the Coat Handler Undercoat Control Shampoo and Conditioner. It's wonderful for this coat type especially. But I use it on a lot of pets, not even double-coated dogs. This is, this is a good system to use on your pets. Of course, our Activet brush. Now Basil's in the tub, and we are going to, of course, thoroughly rinse her, right? We've talked about that a lot in the past. It's a very important step. When we're beginning to wash our dog here, we over-rinse, trying to loosen up all the dander and anything in the coat. We're loosening it up before we get that shampoo in there and let that shampoo do its job. So I start at the withers. I don't like to start with their head or their face. It makes them want to shake. You won't want that. So we're going to overly soap this coat type up, especially this coat type. It, it, it needs a lot of attention. So we're trying to clean everything from the skin out. Remember that, guys? That's on any breed. So really move the hair out of the way with your other hand and make sure you're getting in there to the skin. We're taking this coat back to good. Now we're going to heavily rinse. Thoroughly rinse, very important. Everything out of this coat, over rinse. After you've thoroughly rinsed your dog, we're going to apply that undercoat conditioner. It's gonna help us work that coat. After we get her out of the tub, we're gonna thoroughly brush her again. So let's remember in the last episode of Go Groomer, which was the pet wash review. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. I'm encouraging you guys to use these pet wash stations because you can do a fantastic job with your dog in those stations. The equipment that I have that I'm showing you is the equipment that you can use in a lot of these pet wash stations and I really, really am encouraging you guys to take advantage of that. I wanted to show you real quick this next clip. This is what you won't have to deal with at home if you use a pet wash station. You'll be thankful. Take a look. This is what you will not have to deal with in your bathroom at home. Now Basil's out of the tub. I've toweled her off and I'm going to spray a little bit more of that quicker slicker into her coat before we start brushing her and then drying her. This is going to continue to help us release any hair that is ready to come out. It's also going to repel dirt after we're done grooming Basil. This quicker slicker is a good product for a double coat, guys. I highly recommend it. Then we're gonna go for the brushing. We need to thoroughly brush her again now that she's out of the tub. 
I'm still going to get hair in that brush. And that's why we're doing this. We're trying to release the undercoat. That's what we're doing, guys. After we've completed this step, we're going to get the force dryer out. And that's when you're really going to see the magic. That's the final step to getting that undercoat back to good. Now, this is where the magic comes in, guys. This is the force dryer. This is going to blow out this undercoat. What's left? What we haven't worked already. And we've already worked a lot of it before the bath, during the bath, and now whatever's left that wants to willingly come out is going to come out with this force dryer. And you guys have access to force dryers at the pet wash station. I want you guys to take a closer look when I'm force drying Basil and then Augie. I'm gonna show you two clips. I'm purposely moving the force dryer slow to show you the skin that moves the hair out of the way. And then you can see the skin, and how clean it is and dander free, it's gone just from brushing, bathing, and force drying. Check this out. It looks great. You guys remember what it looked like before we started this process. Here's Augie's coat. His coat looks amazing. Now we're not done. We're almost done. Let's take a look what it did look like. Remember? Now it looks like this. You have access to force dryers at pet washes, guys. Final and last step to properly preparing your dog skin and coat is to thoroughly brush them one more time after they are brushed, bathed, and force dried. Then you'll follow that up with a comb. So you want to thoroughly brush out anything that's left that's willing to come out of the coat. And you're not forcing it out. It's what's willing to. With a good brush, preferably ActiVet brushes. I love them. I'm only telling you that because I love them. I'm getting paid nothing from anybody to tell you guys this and they are available to you too, just like they are to me. So let's take a look at these last few clips together. And remember, our final step is one last good brush out, followed with a comb to make sure we can get through our dog's coat. You see how airy and bouncy her coat is? It's pristine, it's perfect. And what did we do? We used shampoo, conditioner, a little bit of quicker slicker, which you would not even have to use that product if you didn't want to get it but I recommend it. And a brush and a comb and a force dryer, guys. That's it. That's all we need. It's simplicity. Look at this. This could be your dog's coat. You, you don't have to let them get in the condition that they are in and they, and they smell and their coat feels oily and gross and they're scratching at themselves. You can take them to a pet wash and get them in this shape. Let's take one final look at these two up close and see how we did today. I would like it if you guys let me know how I did and if I've helped you. Please leave me a comment. If you have any questions or want to bring anything up to my attention, I really do welcome that. Does the thought of being able to run a comb through your double-coated breed interest you? I just hope that you guys understand it. It really is this simple. Shampoo, conditioner, a brush, a comb, and a force dryer is all you need to maintain this beautiful coat and let that coat do its job for your pet. It's an insulator. It protects them from the sun. It protects them from heat, protects them from cold. It protects them from allergens. But if we let that undercoat get in a bad condition, it can't do its job. The purpose of an undercoat is, is, is amazing. It's, it's pretty impressive. We have to take care of their undercoat, guys, and their top coat. We don't want to damage the undercoat. We need to take care of it and let it take care of your pet. It is amazing coat type. And you may think because your dog has a heavy coat, they're hot all the time. If you're cleaning this coat like this, they can regulate their body temperature. Things that you learned in this tutorial today are very crucial and beneficial to your pet's health and well-being. Thank you so much, Basil and Augie, for sharing tips about your coat. It really helps us to know how to do our job better. It gives me great pleasure to work with beautiful dogs like this every day. As always, thank you for joining me. Please subscribe and ring the bell, guys. There's so much more coming for you. Thank you for joining me.